Titan, the most majestic of Saturn's many moons, and the most promising for life too. It's got a beautiful view and liquid lakes on its surface. The only problem is, those lakes aren't filled with water, they're filled with liquid methane. Your mission is to take a five second dip in one of them. Of course, you'd have to land on Titan first, so buckle up for the most epic adventure of your lifetime. Titan is far, even at its closest to Earth. This icy moon is still 1.2 billion kilometers away from us. You'd be looking at roughly seven years of travel alone in a spaceship. You'd need lots of provisions and a super advanced life support system. You know, it would be good if you made it to Titan and didn't freeze or suffocate somewhere in the middle of the solar system. Yeah, that's not going to happen to you. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Seeing Saturn up close is amazing. Definitely the most spectacular of all the ringed planets in the solar system. But hey, enough sightseeing. It's time to make your way to your destination. Titan is unique in many ways. For one, it's larger than our moon. It's even bigger than Mercury, the smallest planet in our cosmic neighborhood. Neighborhood. It's the only moon that has a thick atmosphere. It's also the only one that's covered in liquid lakes, rivers, and seas, and sometimes it rains here too. Landing on Titan would take you about two and a half hours and you couldn't just land anywhere. Like I said, Titan is covered in lakes, so unless you want to dip your entire spacecraft in liquid methane, you better choose your landing site carefully. Let's try this again. Now that you've properly landed on Titan, let's go explore this icy world. This moon of Saturn might look a lot like Venus, but it's not as hellishly hot. Titan is one of the most hospitable places in the solar system. Yeah, its gravity is only one quarter of Earth's, but its thicker atmosphere makes it possible for you to walk there even without a spacesuit. But I wouldn't recommend that. You need the spacesuit to keep you warm. Titan is very far away from the sun, so it doesn't receive as much warmth as we do here on Earth. You'd be taking a brisk stroll at a chilling minus 180 degrees Celsius. Well, you wouldn't exactly be strolling, more like bouncing around. Thanks to Titan's weaker gravity, you feel a lot lighter and could jump higher and move with less effort. Now, Titan's atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, very similar to Earth's. But you still couldn't breathe on this moon because, well, that's where the similarity ends. While 95% of the air here is nitrogen, the remaining 5% is methane. You need an oxygen tank to survive even 5 seconds on this world. Yeah, it's not just the lakes that have methane in them. There's plenty of methane in Titan's clouds. And sometimes it even rains methane. But this rain isn't anything like what you've seen on Earth. It would be more like rain in slow motion, thanks to Titan's peculiar conditions. Lower gravity and thick atmosphere. On Earth, raindrops fall at about 9 meters per second. But on Titan, their speed is only about 1.6 meters per second. That's six times slower, pretty cool walk in the rain, huh? But hey, you didn't come here for a walk in the rain. You came to take a dip in Titan's lakes. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh, excuse me, who's here? Hi, let's do this. What's up, everybody? I'm Chase. I'm from the year 3050, and for the last, well, things are a bit wobbly where I come from. I've been traveling through space and time a lot. Thing is, I die a lot, like a lot. It's kind of like my special power. It all started when I touched the shiny alien cube. Now I can jump between worlds, dimensions, time, and when I die, I always come back. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I think it has something to do with Einstein. I don't know, it's pretty cool. I've jumped on the rings of distant planets, been the guest of honor at an alien feast, and not in a good way. And there was that one time I accidentally started an interstellar war. But now I'm here on Titan to stop you from doing, um, whatever it is you're doing. Because he only went once, unless you're me. So your mission is to take a swim in one of these methane pools. Uh, let me break it down for you. First off, this ain't no spa day. It's like diving into a freezer. Titan's got this super chilly vat going on, you know what I mean. At these temperatures, water is harder than concrete. But methane and ethane, they're like, yeah, it's cold, bro. But like, we can still chill in liquid form. And so, they gather up at these cool little pools. Okay, I knew that too. 
sorry for interrupting. I'm still just getting to the good part. Now let's say you're wearing that fancy spacesuit. Good news, you won't freeze instantly into ice, and that suit's gonna flow. If for some wild reason you decided to take the plunge without the suit, well, that's it my friend. Lights out. You see, the intense cold would freeze you down to your bone. You couldn't move a muscle. And then the lack of oxygen would get you. The five seconds with the spacesuit on, and you finally survive, probably. Let's test it, okay. Ah, seems like someone's face can't withstand the cold. Someone needs an upgrade. It's so refreshing out here. I think I'll just stay another five seconds just to really enjoy it. Ah, uh, Chase, don't worry. These sparks are supposed to happen. Oh, it's like a stabbing, burning feeling. Hey, it appears that the cold temperature cracked his suit and methane reacted with the oxygen tank inside it. He should have read about this in the mission brief. Well, just leave them here, I guess. Anyway, the mission is a success. The only thing left is to figure out how to get home. Okay, well, maybe instead of returning to Earth, we could set up shop on Titan. In conclusion, it is important to recognize the significance of wearing a spacesuit when venturing into the methane pools on Titan. The extreme cold on Titan would freeze a person to their bones, rendering them immobile and leading to a lack of oxygen. This emphasizes the crucial role that the spacesuit plays in ensuring survival in such harsh conditions. During the test, it became apparent that someone's face could not withstand the extreme cold, indicating a need for an upgraded suit. The sparks experience were expected, although they caused a stabbing and burning sensation, as the cold temperature caused the suit to crack, resulting in the reaction between methane and the oxygen tank inside. Despite these challenges, the mission can still be considered a success. The next step is to determine how to return home, considering the circumstances. Alternatively, the possibility of setting up a settlement on Titan could be explored. Overall, the experience sheds light on the importance of proper preparation and understanding of the environment when embarking on such extraordinary missions.